Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 25. Today it is Mount Gelmir, but the lower part of it. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you have any tips of your own, leave them in the pinned tips comment so other people can look over them. But otherwise, we are at the Grace that is at the bottom of Gelmir, which is uh, just located at the edge of Altus Plateau. And now we're just heading into this, uh, this ravine. Now we've already been here, and we've grabbed this golden seed. Obviously, you're going to avoid these uh, fiery plumes, unlike me. But there is a smithing zone for five. I was close. I knew it was a smithing zone. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Uh, so it's rejuvenating boluses. So pick, pick that up. Hefty beast bone. Uh, a nascent butterfly. I, I let, could not even tell you what that does. Um, and now there is a... A dungeon, a cave, but we need two stone sword keys to get into it. Now, currently we only have one in our inventory, so lucky us, there is actually a stone sword key just slightly up the way. So we are, in fact, going to go and grab that. Oh, apparently I missed this. It's nothing. It's kind of hard to see on the way past. Yeah. Yeah, it really is just a nothing. Yeah, <laughs> herba, epic. Kush. So, um... just the Continue down the ravine. There's like literally almost nothing. Um, they try and trap you with this fireproof dried liver. Cool. Um, and then there's a grace at the end. It, right, that fireproof dried liver feels like like you just took fire damage. Here's the thing that prevents fire damage. It feels yeah. like when in Bloodborne they'd put blood vials right inside a trap. Yeah, so you take damage and get hurt by something, and your reward for that is the blood vial. So really, they were just wasting your time. Aye, aye. They fucking do it all the fucking time. <laughs> so, heading up to this little graveyard bit with the, uh, with the jellyfish, this is the stone sword key. So, which means now we can head back and open up the, uh, the door to the cave. Yeah, so the cave is sea water um it's a poison cave so make sure you've got uh flame cleanse me at the ready because you may very well get poisoned while you're in there and the grace that we started at by the way is called sea water terminus on the map and near that had we not already been to it would have been a scarab and the scarab had the uh barrage yes yes so there would have been a scarab on the way on the way here. That is correct. Well remembered, actually. Well done. Thanks. But then, technically speaking, it would have been pretty obvious for you if you were doing it. Like, you couldn't have missed it. So it's, it's no harm, no foul. But the cool thing is, is at least relating to the guide, when it got to this point, I was really gutted because I was like, oh man, I actually need to buy a stone sword key. But nope, I only had to buy that three, that one time uh, for the, uh, the round table hold. And otherwise, the game literally gives you every stone sword key you need. As long as you've been following the guide one to one. So that's pretty cool. So, from from memory, uh, this cave is another nothing cave. Yeah. Um, you do get a pretty cool talisman as a reward for killing the boss. But I will talk about that when it pops up. Other than that, it's really just some poison tunnels and some bugs and that's about it gotta love it now the cool thing is again we've mentioned this before if you have the uh the physic flask tier that gives you the hp regen it actually just completely mitigates all the damage that you take from poison so these poison pools don't need to worry about it if you're poisoned that's fine because you're, you're regening the same amount of health as you can see, poisoned health bars barely moving. It's fluctuating back and forth, basically. Yeah, and this is the—I guess this is the first time we get to actually uh, put the great stars into action. Come to think of it. And uh, yeah, and as you're seeing, it's turning enemies to paste. Yeah, um, it's they're they're really good. Uh, not only that, again, the great stars give you one percent of your HP back per hit of an enemy. So uh, just go to town on a group of enemies. You can kind of trade damage sometimes, or just it just—I mean, it's just—it's just more more health regen for free on weapons that were good to begin with. So they're they're just fantastic. 
Yeah, that effect procs twice as well, so because we're carrying two of them, every hit's giving us 2% back, not just one. Well, it does only work with... You actually have to hit with both from the L1. Uh, for the Yeah, so if you do like the L1 attacks, you'll get, get it back, but uh, if you do an R1 attack while holding both, you don't get 2% back, sadly. Still though, you might think that these mushroom guys might drop the set. They don't. The only thing in here is uh, Lesser Kindred of Rot, which we've yet to actually find. So there's Speaking a mushroom, mushroom set. set. <laughs> yeah. So that actually is imperative that you pick that up now that I think about it, because you pretty much need it for Lake of Rot, because it gives you a huge amount of resistances. Yeah, and we tried other methods to get across Lake of Rot without it, like um, stacking all the health regen effects that we had access to at the time. And you just can't outpace it. Yes, so, just still not enough. <laughs> yeah, the, the best method we have is just make your poison resistance as high as possible and then cure it whenever you get it. All right, so we're just uh, beating up some poor rats for some poison darts. And then we're just moving on to the boss. It's a very straightforward cave. Uh, can you remember what the boss is? Yeah, it's two lesser kindred of rot. It's the kindred duo. So that's so, why my drops say there's Kindred of Rot in here. So actually ignore... I, I think I might have mentioned that there's Kindred of Rot in here. Yeah, th there isn't. The boss is, but they won't drop anything, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is this this has to be the least boss boss in the entire game, right? I mean, it is just two dudes in a cave. Yeah. Admittedly, getting pelted off pest threads is actually kind of horrendous right at the beginning, but... Oh, look at that, though. A jumping attack broke its stance, and then it's frostbitten, and now it's dead. You know, <laughs> I'm going to say the better option to be would have been to just run at one and just spam it, L1. Yeah, probably. Um, th We did get a cool talisman for killing them, though. That's the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. If poison occurs in your vicinity, so that means if you get poisoned, if an enemy gets poisoned... um. Regardless of how that happens, um, you get a 20% damage increase, temporarily. It's a very powerful buff. So we put Wild Strikes on our uh, Great Stars, and also we used the souls that we got from the Seathwater Cave to level up. Right now we are just pumping into Vigor and nothing else. We are just everything into vigor because we need to start making some of our uh, our vigor back because we were at 54 and then we had to drop down to 44 after we respect for the great stars now that guy we just killed there was a fire monk um they can drop the entire fire monk set so the 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 hood the armor the gauntlets and greaves they can drop the fire monk's flame mace uh, and then the one in the giant conquering hero grave can drop the fire monk's flame blade and this guy is a prelate, I think. A flame prelate, specifically. Basically just looks like small from Dark Souls 1. But, now that we've got the great stars, everything dies to just spam and jump in L1. That is, that's the game now. Just XL1, XL1, XL1. I don't know really if that's changed. better or worse than power stance katanas, to be honest. I think this is more fun. It, well, I think it changed the gameplay up from uh, spamming L2 to spamming L1. It's quite it's quite cool, like that. <laughs> so we picked up a cookbook from below there. Uh, then there's a golden rune up here. And then there's also this fucking thing going on right now. Um, yeah, you just hop over the fence, speak to this guy, get the fire scorpion charm. Easy peasy. Fire Scorpion Charm gives you, I want to say, a 12% buff to your fire damage, but it also makes you take slightly increased damage, so it's kind of a risk or reward thing. If you really want to min-max your fire damage as much as you can, that talisman's great. If you're not fussed about that, well, then maybe save the slot for a more defense-oriented buff. Yeah, like if you really want to fucking give it to one of the air tree avatars, then this is that's something you can use to buff the damage from your uh, flame and strike. So, coming up yeah. is another boss. This time, it's another Magma Worm. Um, honestly, with the with the great stars, you'll have no issues. 
So we are using a cool combination of Crag Blade and Wild Strikes. Uh, well, strictly speaking, it's just the Wild Strikes because. Uh, so we're going to just use the jumping L ones normally to just kind of get our hits in when we've uh, got low positional advantage, and then when we get a good positional advantage, we're just we're just spamming Wild Strikes, baby. That is uh, that's how this thing is going to die. I'll talk a little bit about what Cragblade does. So Cragblade gives you a boost to your physical damage and your posture damage. So you will break an enemy's stance more easily if you have Cragblade on your weapon. And that buff is percentage based, not a flat increase. So if your weapon already does good stance damage, then Cragblade will make it deal even better stance damage. Um, Wild Strike similarly does very, very good stance damage, as you can see. After a couple of jump attacks and using Wild Strikes on it the once, you got to do that much damage for free, because Wild Strikes is fantastic, especially on a great hammer. Yep, so not only are we inflicting bleed off that Wild Strikes, we are inflicting frost on that Wild Strikes, we are inflicting a huge amount of poise damage off that Wild Strikes, it's just devastating. As you can see, the positioning was tough to begin with because it was spamming lav everywhere and we were jammed in behind a wall. But once we got it in a good position, Wild Strikes, bang. Fucking dead. So you can thank us for that in the comments. So now we're heading up here and uh, on this little uh, rocky bit, so long as we've done Alexander's quest correctly, which of course you have because you've been following the guide, you'll be sitting in the lava and then you can get the jar helmet, which is finally... A helmet that is better than the one that we're wearing. <laughs> I cannot believe that because it looks so goofy, but it's amazing. I know, so, um, so we do wear it for quite a while. Yeah, the jar helmet, by the way, is uh, kind of interesting because it does give you an increase to the damage that your thrown pots do, which is a nice little passive boost. And uh, just make sure that when you talk to Alexander there, you do fully exhaust his dialogue because it is kind of a pain in the ass to come back here if you don't have him at the next yes. stage of his quest. So, just fully exhaust his dialogue, as you should with every NPC, and he will move to the next location, no problem. So, up here we grab Royal and Magma, which is uh, an incantation. Now, there's going to be our Rune Bear uh, appearing, and we need to use this Rune Bear to uh, break the uh, this little statue that holds some smith and stones. Now, it, this is like a pain in the ass encounter. You've got all these demi-humans fucking coming at you. And it's one of those things where it's really just not worth killing everything. And obviously we don't want to be fighting a rune bear, but we also need to get into position for it to break this thing. And there we go. I do think I die in this encounter. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe I don't. Maybe you don't. Um, Roiling Magma, by the way, is a sorcery, not an incantation. It's one of oh. the magma sorceries. And the Gilnia sorceries. Um, God, what the fuck is this encounter, man? Jesus Christ. I'm just trying rough, to pick up a fucking a word. Ugh. <laughs> oh. See, if you were going to tackle this um, for yourself, maybe clear out some of these demi-humans first, the ones yeah, surrounding like the statue, because it'll make grabbing the items easier. Like, even with just the demi-humans, even without the bear, you're still taking damage, they're still causing you problems. Just clear those guys out first before baiting the bear. Yeah. And you'll have a much easier time. But so, where the bear jumped down from, you're going to grab this item on the ledge. Yay. Now, the demi <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yay, question mark. Uh, the demi-humans can drop the fall chain, the club, the spike club, the great knife, the bloodstained dagger, rickety shield... Uh, so basically whatever weapon that they're holding, they can drop. Now we've got the pulley crossbow, which sadly is not the pulley bow, because the pulley bow is the bow that we end up using for the rest of the game, because it is a bow that upgrades using somber stones, which is actually yay exclamation mark, not yay question mark. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the demi humans can, um, can drop string, glass shards, rune fragments, rainbow stones, glow stones, volcanic stones. Nothing you need to give a singular fuck about. So, picking up a sacramental bud, that's, that's, yay, full stop. <laughs> There's a couple of items scattered around in this village. There's some string. Again, that's a quite a rare crafting material. It's for roped pots, so you can throw them behind you. 
Um, there's the Errant Sorcerer set, and yep. the helmet for that is in another location in this little village. Um, what is with the happening. fire attacks that these things are? What is that? They're throwing volcano pots at you. Which, oh. by the way, are a fantastic consumable. If you did want a pot that's cheap and does a lot of damage, volcano pots are a good option. Um, that item Picked there up. is the oh. only important Bratling pet in the game. Correct. That is actually tied to Box Quest. Uh, also, Starlight Shards, again, reiterate, do not use or consume any of those Starlight Shards until you've done Saluvis' quest. So... Now we are running past all this shit and we're just going to grab the grace, which is inexplicably technically in a boss room, and you can rest at the grace to reset the boss. <laughs> but as like a result... I told you, you could do that, and you were surprised that, that that was possible. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it would be a thing that makes sense, but we're going to summon the Mimic Tear because the Mimic Tear is based and um, kind of goo-pilled, I guess. Do you know what's but better than two great stars? Four great oh, stars! Great stars. <laughs> <laughs> so, hilariously, uh, so the cool thing about doing this is actually this boss can be a total pain in the ass because you're getting peppered off spells off these fucking sorcerers. But, if you just run past everything and go to the grace, you can actually kill the sorcerers quickly first and then deal with the demi-human queen. It's definitely, like, highly suggested that you just do it that way. Because if you're coming here first time, you actually don't know that there's a grace there. So you kind of feel like you have to do this legitimately the first time, and then you get pure tricked. Well, actually, if you just know there's a grace there to begin with, you and the Mimic tier can just, <laughs> just blast fuck out this demi-human queen. <laughs> God, the great stars are so good. <laughs> I know, honestly, like, sometimes you just think, like, oh, maybe I need to mix it up by, like, doing, like, a, a different attack. And it's like, nah, jumping L1 will carry you through this entire game. Pro tip, jumping L1 is how we beat Millennia. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, strictly speaking, uh, if you don't want Wild Strikes, um, Wild Strikes is better for bosses and NPCs. For general use, highly recommend using Lion's Claw, which we have um, for killing that boss. We get a Memory Stone. That's that's cool, um, but yeah, uh, Lion's Claw would be the 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 preferred thing. But we just haven't hit a grace since the Magma Worm. So getting that Golden Rune Six, you can indeed jump off the end of this to reach the middle portion of the upper portion of Mount Gelmir. This is currently the upper portion of the lower portion of Mount Gelmir. <laughs> Yeah, so not particularly well explained, but... I think that was as, about well explained as it could be. Now, speaking to that guy, you'll get Comet Azure. <laughs> Mount Gelmir is like a helix. They wrap around each other. There's yeah. two spirals. We're at the top of one of the spirals now. If you jump off that end, you're in the middle of the other spiral. I, I preferred the way I said it, but sure, yeah, I guess... So, using our souls, again, leveling up more vigor, as we've shown you. But now we've spoken to um, Comet Azure Man, we can head back to Selen and uh, speak to her. Speak to her about Azure, specifically. And now we're just going to exhaust our dialogue options with that stuff. I think there might be a choice to make in dialogue. So, yep, let us journey together. Um, and then she's got a favor to ask you. We get the uh, Selen Seal Breaker. And then uh, exhaust the dialogue again, and then we are going to ah Celia going back Hideaway. to the Celia Hideaway. Yeah. I don't know if we really showed it um, while we were here in the Kaled episode, but there is a big blue seal at the bottom of this place, and you needed that key item from Selen to be able to unlock it. Behind it is another one of the primeval sorcerers with another one of the legendary sorceries. Um, so you get Stars of Ruin from this one, which is an excellent sorcery. It used to be a lot better because it used to track a lot stronger, uh, a lot more closely. So you could pretty much just spam it and win. Um, and we got another Primeval Sorcery and one of the legendaries from uh, Primeval Sorcerer Azur. 
which was Comet Azure, and that is the haha funny nuke one shot spell. Um, it's really boring, but it is effective. So something I just want to mention again about the Great Stars is that our Great Stars are nowhere near as upgraded as what our Katanas were, and yet they are absolutely rocking the game. The great stars are based. This isn't news. It isn't news, but like strictly speaking, the amount of damage that we are doing and the ease of the damage in which we're doing is truly impressive. And our weapons aren't even close to being as up uh, fully upgraded because we just didn't have enough upgrade materials. So like that's kind of it's super impressive. So now we've got the uh, star stars of ruin. We've unlocked the seal. We go back to her. We speak to her again. Something, something, exhaust our dialogue options, Lusat's location. Then we get a Starlight Shards. Again, don't use them. And you get the option now to fulfill the latter half of Selen's quest, I believe. Yes, I think, um, I think we do it. Yeah, the reason we can't, I think, is because of what we're doing right now. We haven't spoken to Jeren after the Red Main Festival, so you can do this immediately, and you should do this at the end of the section of the guide where we covered the Radan Festival. Uh, I mean, it's okay, it doesn't really matter too much. Nah, not really, but since you have the opportunity to do it there and then, you could, and it'd save you time now. Um, but yeah, speak to Jaren, that'll close out the festival, and then you can encounter him, over at the Witchbane Ruins from way back when, when we were on the Weeping Peninsula, all those episodes ago. So it would appear that we don't... Did we not finish Selen's quest just now? Um, I can't imagine why we wouldn't. Yeah. Unless it involves ruining uh, Celibus's quest. No, there we go. We can transplant the primal glintstone. And then after you save quit, Jaren will appear here. Yes. Okay, it would appear we don't finish Selen's quest just yet, just yet, because this is way too early, way too late in the video. But this is effectively setting it up. So now we've got our, our primal glintstone. Um, oh, fuck it. I, I was looking behind me the whole time. Of course, one fucking guy shows up. <laughs> So now I think we do what you say, I think we quit out. So speak to her, quit out. Bang, we're back in. And then Jaren's here. Thinks it's weird that you would be here, the champion of the festival, just in a random dungeon in the Weeping Peninsula. Well, it's, um, it's weird that he's here, isn't it? Same goes to him, bro. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he has no decent explanation, so. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's just like, I fell. Um, yeah, j just quickly, this is the stats we've got. We've worked back to the other Mount Gelmir grace that we got. And now we're going to do Mount Gelmir upper section in the next part. And okay, there we go. That's lower Gelmir. Done. Join us in part 26, where we're going to be doing upper Mount Gelmir. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.